All right, all well, continuing on with the Dodge Charger from Fast and Furious 1970. We're on to uh, stage five. Get everything out here. Look at our hardware we have. Let's see, it's any duplicate hardware. Here we got IM, CM, AM, and EM. Okay, let's get these uh, opened up real quick. Then we have our storage container. Let's just drop them in there. That way we're not fumbling around. We got some EMs, A, B, C, D, E. H, I, I, M. H, I. And we got some CMs. Knock this out, A, B, C. Cool. Move the exacto knife. Please be careful when um, using sharp tools. Oh, we got more. A lot of hardware on this one. That looks like a part, not hardware. So we got JMs. J, J is next. And we got some more DMs. A, B, C, D. And we got FMs. A, B, C, D, E, F. What we got here, we have front section chassis. And torsion bar, tie rod end bushing, chassis strut, left engine support, and a bunch of screws. So starting off with the Last issues uh, completed tire assembly, wheel assembly. Um, we have a, they want us to insert the tie rod end. This guy. Down here. Is that correct? It's not seating all the way. Is there another one? This is the only, only one. There we go. Just had to rotate it. All right, so now we're taking the uh, left tie rod. They look identical on each side. And then they have two, looks like alignment pins. They want that facing inside. And we need uh, a JM screw. Grab a JM screw, let's get it ready, install the tie rod, it's kind of a tight fit, this is a metal parts here, do we have a good alignment here, use your light to make sure the light shines all the way through. So you know you lined up. Now you can start installing the screw. And then it does that. Hmm. 
going on here? Not right. So according to the picture, this is not installed properly. They're not it goes like this. This there's a larger hole on this side and a smaller hole. So the screw goes into the larger hole first but that does not correspond with the instructions see how easy that was <laughs> right I'm saying it's all finger strength. Get this all the way down because there's, they're so small for my hands. If you have smaller hands, you can get more leverage. See, according to this, it looks like those little pins are facing that way. But in order to stall this properly, it had to go the other way. So now it wants me to take, um, separate the shock absorbers. So let's try and do that. Making it look easy, but it doesn't appear to be. Okay, it did. It did it. Okay, then the spring from the last issue goes inside here. And they want you to reassemble. Okay, that's what I did. All right, that spring seems kind of useless, but we'll see. Set this aside. So let's grab the front chassis and it goes like this. Now we need to get the torsion bar. Torsion bar goes to here. need a DM screw to secure it. DM. This is why I like easier stages. That suspension was uh, pretty difficult. What'd you think? Did I look like a, a bumbling fool putting that together? I'm usually um, more handy than that.
Now turn it over. The screw is not like seated all the way. I wonder if it needs to be. But it doesn't feel like it can go any further. Let's try it one more time. And then I turn, it turns the whole torsion bar. Maybe after this side is installed, it will work. So let's just continue on. Okay. Now we need um, this piece. Not just showing aft goes like this, and we need um, an IM screw. Okay. Oops. Okay, this fits into this notch here. And into here. And install the IM screw here. Get a good grip on this and drive this baby home. Now I know a lot of people say put some oil on these metal to uh, metal screws to metal inserts okay eventually I got it I personally feel you don't need that because that'll build your strength in your hands and that oil and that will um, serve you well in the long run Let's go tighten this back up. So, uh, yeah. No, it's still spinning. Okay, what's next? You turn front section of the chassis back over and attach the front left upper spring mount 4J to the left side of the chassis by inserting the two pins in the corresponding sockets. That's back this way. Then these guy down in here. See that? All right. Okay. It doesn't stay together, so why are you asking me to do that? Then holding the wheel assembly point, turn the front section of the chassis over and attach using um, two FM screws. Oh, getting back to my little point there. 
Um, working in the aviation industry 35 years, we use oil or lubricants to help remove uh, seized up screws and such. Um, the way I see it is when you're self-tapping a screw, it's kind of like winding a spring. You don't want to use a little bit of oil that'll help loosen the screw as well. Remember, this is um, not really a toy. And once you put this all together, you want to keep it together. Hello, let's turn Oh, no, no, no. Put it back in. A bit tricky. Just flip it over, insert. This makes no sense at all. The spring does not compress. See how much of a struggle this is. And that spring keeps coming out of the suspension. Struggling, struggling.
Make sure I'm lining it up on the right holes. Go back here. I'm looking at that and then The spring came out again. That seems uh, really weird and odd. The spring does not really compress into the shock absorber housing. Let's see if I can get it back in. One more time before finishing this section up. Step ahead, and I need an EM screw. Right here. That's going to connect the tie rod. Right here. Get all of this started so that way that was a bit of a challenge right there. Like we have extra parts here. all the way I think that's how it's supposed to be. Last time to try and tighten these bad boys. Makes me wonder if I should uh, use oil. You see, no, you just let it sit and relax. 
come back in a minute or two and you can feel it growing in. Okay. This piece this goes right here. Okay, these are some seat and screws. Yeah, so those aircraft have tremendous amount of torque, heat, tension. It's almost impossible to get screws out and bolts. So you have to use penetrating oil. That's why I'm hesitant of using oil myself. 